Word Up. Next Sunday, March 23rd, is the 175th anniversary of the invention of a word that English professor Alan Metcalf believes is America's most successful export. There's no other word that is widely recognized throughout the world. No other American word has succeeded like that. If you don't know what that word is, it's okay. Seriously, it's okay. The word okay. For Metcalf, the world's foremost OK expert, one reason for OK's appeal is its versatility. What part of speech is it? Above all, it's an adjective when you say this is OK, but it's also a noun. I gave this my OK. Mm, I love that. It's also a verb. I OK'd it. It's also an adverb. She did it OK. He drives OK. Yes, and it's also an interjection. Okay. So just where did this word come from? For years, its origin was a linguistic mystery. One theory? It came from the Greek phrase ola kala, which means all good. And then there's the Choctaw word okay, which sounds like and means okay. President Woodrow Wilson reportedly thought it was the correct spelling of the word and would okay documents with okay. And finally, the most famous OK origin story was reinforced in the 2012 Academy Award-winning movie, Silver Linings Playbook. You know where the term OK comes from? No, no, I don't. Where? Well, Martin Van Buren, the eighth president of the United States of America, is from Kinderhook, New York. Oh. And he was part of the club, a men's club, called Old Kinderhook. And if you were cool, you were in the club, you'd say, that guy's OK, because he's in the old Kinderhooks. Really? No, not really. So, not okay. Okay, the real story of okay is hilarious. In 1839, an abbreviation craze was sweeping Boston. Charles Gordon Green, editor of the Boston Morning Post, came up with an abbreviation, okay, which he indicated meant all correct. If you didn't know how to spell all correct. Okay, it was funny in 1839. Now, while President Van Buren wasn't the origin of OK, the man known as Old Kinderhook did have a hand in popularizing it. You have to feel a little bit bad because OK was kind of Martin Van Buren's only claim to fame. Yes, well, I think if you go to Kinderhook, they'll still have plaques and announcements that that was the origin of OK. They're not OK with <laughs> your origin story. That's right. But it's OK if they want to do it. The earliest appearance in a dictionary that we could find was an 1864 edition of the Slang Dictionary of Vulgar Words. But today, does OK hold its own against that other common utterance, like? In the battle of like versus OK, who comes out on top? Oh, OK comes up way out on top and underneath, too. Like is so wussy, all it does is just give a little bit of an affirmation OK has a much broader range. And like is also, when you don't know what else to say, you just throw a like in. OK is used around the globe. But Metcalf says that the word born in America expresses a quintessentially American philosophy. You never will say anything is OK if it's not satisfactory. OK, and this OK is expressing skepticism right now. That feels like it equals mediocrity. It allows for mediocrity, but mediocrity that succeeds, because Americans figure out how to get things done, rather than waiting for perfection. Okay, by which I mean I accept what you're saying. Funny that a word so common appears in only one famous quotation. I'm okay, you're okay. Okay, never a star attraction, but always in a supporting role. Okay, it's emphatic, it's distinctive, it's simple, Americans don't like complicated philosophies or ways of life, and OK is about as short and simple as you can get. So pencil next Sunday in as OK Day.